Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Lead Gen HQ podcast. Today we're doing a deep dive into the industry that shapes our future, education. Whether you're operating a daycare, a K through 12 school, or a college, we've got actionable insights for you. All right, ready to chalk it up? Let's jump right into it. This first part, I'm going to break it up into three parts, actually. Uh, daycares, K through 12, and higher education. I myself have four children that are in three different age categories. So what I have found over time was that as a parent, it's very hard for you to do research for the daycare age kids. So under five, the kids that are K through 12. And then when you do K through 12, we're looking at charter schools, private schools, online schools, public schools. I mean, there's so many different categories of schools that you can look look for. And um, when you look for the data, and the data is very fragmented, right? So you could look at um, you know a website like greatschools.org, which powers a lot of the real estate websites, but that data isn't always accurate, right? So K through 12. And then when we go to the college age kids, as your kids, your kids start to get to those later um, grades in high school, you start to compare what colleges they can go to. But then from colleges, you have everything from your community college to your private college, for-profit college, and so on. And then you're looking to see, well, should I compare what's in the U.S. news report? Because some of those reports are paid. Many of even the Ivy League schools have left altogether and are no longer rated because we know that it's it's all very well manipulated. Those are, in essence, advertising platforms to create reports. So it's a pay for play. And so you don't know who to trust. Now, on the other hand, if you are the school, now I have worked in the last 15 years with more than 45 daycares, K through 12 schools, and colleges. I've worked with many universities and colleges to do different uh, programs, uh, both for working students, but also new students in the undergrad programs. And it is different. Everything is different. I mean, even at the MBA level, the way you market is different. I think that one thing that is um, underutilized heavily is the use of the actual professors and teachers, because there's so much that you can do there with professors, but they some some schools just decide that um, they're going to do all the marketing on their own and they don't want help from the teachers. And I, I've always thought that that was a, a, a real mistake because the teachers are the ones who know what's going on at the ground level, right? So if you look at an app like Rate My Professor, Rate My Professor gets a ton of traffic. Why aren't schools using it more strategically with the professors? But they just leave it to the professors to actually answer their own reviews when in fact they should work together and by by you know marketing that particular professor they're able to enroll more students so it's just a different way to look at it that i think colleges at least the colleges that i've worked with it's very they they are very dismembered from the rest of the organization you know you have hr you have finance you have admissions you have marketing of course and then you have your your staff professors and it's it's this type of it's a system that doesn't promote that everyone works together right and that that's now at the sm- at the lower level like a daycare it's much easier to do the marketing and the K through 12 not so hard either but the college we're going to get to and it's going to be a, an interesting part of our conversation because you have your for profits who which still do buy lead generation do lead generation and buy leads from third party platforms and then you have your state colleges, community colleges, um, and nonprofit colleges that do not buy leads from, um, from, from third-party lead generation platforms, right? So daycares. So you've got to stand out in a sea of options. Social media is your friend here. And I really mean that. Uh, so, so, you know, you, you want to create cute, shareable content that parents won't be able to resist in the posting. So for daycares, it is absolutely about reviews and absolutely about connecting with the mommy groups the mommy influencers these are the channels and the people that have your ideal customer profile your icp so you want to make strategic um, deals with them because at the end of the day as new people move into town 
and and current current residents continue to have children they know within you know a 10 to 15 mile radius which typically where people as far out as people are willing to go by and large part sure there are small portion of the population that are willing to drive more than 15 miles but most people 10 miles is as much as they'll go for a daycare because they're working and so you know you have your ymcas so you have your nonprofit organizations and then you have your um daycares that are actual franchises and then you have your independent daycares as well right and then there are some states uh state programs that do some daycare as well but again it's really about the the reviews and then of course there is the question about what kind of funding or grants you provide if it's if it's you know income based so for the daycare in the in the world of daycare it's a very hyper local marketing message and whether you're getting a boatload of leads through the government because you're getting vouchers and people are coming in or whether you are doing some local advertising and marketing and it's working for you i think what i see in large part with daycares is that there's a there's a, just a disconnect there with the consumers because you can look at the reviews and there are a lot of parents who are discontent after all you're leaving your baby under five babies to five years old with um you know at the beginning strangers who are supposed to take care so the job of a daycare provider all the teachers and staff is an incredibly difficult job as it is so having that relationship with the parents and asking them for reviews uh, is super important you know but some parents are going to use a, a service like care.com and care.com would be a, a an example of a third party lead generation company that collects the information there the in between and then they match the student to your school but you have to pay for those leads right so whether you are a daycare a k-12 or college it, it comes down to managing your your content managing the engagement managing the reviews oh and and those are the things that you have to do and as you get into those later ages up to higher education the budgets become bigger but at the daycare level, the budget is very skinny. So you can't do a lot of marketing, but you can get creative. As I said, partner with those mommy groups. If you're a daycare, we've worked with many daycares where you know we can generate a lead for up to $20, $25. So the question is $20, $25 for a lead. If you could close four leads, that, that's costing you $100. So let's say that's $100 cost per lead for a daycare uh, possible lead. If they come in and they they sign up at a hundred dollar cost per acquisition of of that customer right and that was the cost of four leads does that make sense for you yeah i think so because most daycares are going to range between you know anywhere on the low low end six hundred dollars all the way on up to a thousand dollars so you know over the the lifetime of that customer so the lifetime value may be three four five years and then beyond that they may have siblings they may have cousins they may have neighbors so if you nurture that relationship and get those reviews and ask them to do user generated content get involved with the daycare you you can for the lifetime of each parent and each child that's there you can probably generate five times the the lifetime value when properly managed so it isn't terribly difficult to do you know daycare marketing and lead generation it just you have to be very thoughtful and then take take advantage of those relationship relationships so k-12 through you know reviews reviews and more reviews whether it's greatschools.org or google you want those top five star ratings and you know don't underestimate the power of an and and what what we would say is the open house we've done this with k-12 through schools that are private that we've worked with and of course during you know the pandemic you did a lot of virtual but then we get back to in person and this is where you win the parents over because with an open house you can give them a tour i mean we worked with a school called access school in in uh, davie florida they served 60 children on the spectrum with differing abilities and um you know they depended every time on parents coming in every season any time between let's say may and july for enrollment those three months were very important to enroll anywhere between five to ten new students now this was a small school and they were you know 
catering to a different population. But nevertheless, you they understood the cost per lead there. And so you as a K through 12 school, you know, of course, public is very different. Public, um, you know, you're, I wouldn't say you're stuck, but it's based on where you live. Most places around the country are not going to give you federal, you know, uh, uh, vouchers. And so you're either going to do homeschool, virtual school, or if you're in any town, as you see with, um, when you buy real estate, you get that feed from, um, uh, from, uh, the, the different, uh, comparison websites, right? Like great schools.org. And, you know, you have two, three choices if you're going to do public school. And we have what, 50 million K through 12 students that go to school every day. So there's only so many schools out there that you can, you know, have the choice of going to. And so we look at that and then we look at for the charter and the private schools, it's a little bit different because they can actually create a budget, right? Create a budget from either donors or from the actual, you know, their for-profit school. If they're private, often they are they are for profit, so they can do whatever they want with their funds. And I've seen, uh, I've I've seen, I've worked with schools that will spend up to five hundred dollars per closed lead. So that is to say, if they can generate five leads for a private school and one of them closes, they're they're happy with that number, right? You could never do that in a a public school or even a charter school for that matter. But those are, those are some of the, the experiences that I've had with the lead generation in daycare and in K through 12, right? Which kind of leads us right to the next phase of life as far as like the education journey of any child. And so this, I think on this podcast, though, I'm talking about lead generation and marketing. It really it's a podcast that allows you to understand it from every angle. You know, you see it from different viewpoints, uh, whether you're a parent, whether you're a teacher, administrator, it, it doesn't matter. It all impacts you because we're all doing this together. And there's honestly no, no, no industry that is as important as the education industry. I mean, one could say healthcare and food, but other than that, it's really education. You know, you look at a resource like Khan Academy, what Khan Academy has been able to do in the last 10 years is incredible. They've de democratized education. And now with Conmigo, you know, they're able to offer tutoring because tutoring is one of those things that you you have in, in the education system, you know, as far as like the, the K through 12 that for a long time was out of reach for most parents. Uh, but not now because AI and apps like Conmigo and ChatGPT allow parents and kids to have access to really next level tutoring, right? And I think for teachers, it's important too with AI because it's going to allow you to do more important things like engage with, engage and teach children rather than grade papers and, and, and give tests, right? So I love everything that's happening in the education space. I heavily follow uh, Khan Academy and uh, Sal Khan and some of the big education names, uh, educator names out there in the space. Um, my wife and I have the four kids who we homeschool. And so we're always interested into learning about what's next, because before you know it, they're going to be in college. And so when it comes to college, it's a, it's a little bit different because college is about content. So you create a lot of content. If you even look at LinkedIn, uh, we've worked with multiple universities over the, over the years, both prior for-profit and nonprofit universities. And it is a lot about content, creating a lot of lead magnets, creating a lot of guides. Um, now, whether it's financial aid or, you know, giving webinars or virtual campus stores, you've got to offer value that turn prospective students into enrolled students. And I've seen some really interesting tactics that I don't agree with. And I don't think that it works. Like for example, you know, uh, a college I worked with that did um, a very pricey MBA program north of $50,000 a year, you know, their idea of closing more deals once they got the students and these were working students, right? So these are already professionals, but they're going back to school to earn their MBA. One of the ways they did this was by buying all this fancy machinery, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollar espresso machines or cappuccino machines, you know, expensive couches to put in the, uh, you know, admissions office. So it's a lot of smoking mirrors, and I think people realize that. But there, for some people at the higher education level, there is that prestige. You know, if they've if they've made up their mind 
honestly, it's not even the school's marketing. If they've made up their mind that they want to be associated with uh, this college or that college and they want to call this college their alma mater down the road because they have contacts, then in the affinity to that brand is is much more deep than just doing a marketing campaign. But, you know, lead generation for for-profit college is still alive and well. I mean, you see whether you go on Google and Bing or LinkedIn, the colleges are still paying for-profit colleges, third-party uh, platforms to generate leads for them. And sometimes these leads can cost hundreds of dollars. But I'll go back to something I said at the beginning of this episode, which was, I don't know why administrators don't utilize their teachers more. I think that the teachers are the ones that need to be the face. The professors are the ones that need to be the face. Forget all the fancy stuff and, and, and gamification apps and all of that on the website. I think that what could work really well, and I, I have a few examples where we were able to build out content this way with certain department heads being in the forefront, you know, doing LinkedIn uh, posts, doing YouTube videos, how-to videos, frequently asked questions videos. And, and, and you just, you allow your staff, the professors who are spending, nine, you know, 90% of the students' times are spent with the professors. The professors should be the faces. And I never understand why so many colleges decide that, you know, I'm going to spend millions and millions of dollars on mass media on billboards, on TV and radio ads that don't have the faces of the professors. I understand professors come and go, but like I mentioned before, rate my professor, you know, when you have a, a program, a college of whatever it is within your school that that is ran by really amazing people, students tell students, this has always been the case. You know, even when I was in college, you could you could take a specific program, let's say hospitality, because you heard that the the head of this program or there's a professor that you must work with. And one professor could change your the trajectory of your entire career just between the connections and whatnot. You know, so I think that, um, you know, when it comes to lead generation and marketing, it's it's a, a head scratcher for me that. In all my time, in all my years working in lead gen with higher education and K through 12 and even daycares is that they don't use the staff as much to do the content. And so uh, maybe it'll change in the future. If you are an educator, administrator, or even a parent listening, I would say, let me know, drop me a line and let me know if you agree with that thought. Um, it's something that I've talked to other, other colleges quite a bit about, and they've, you know, usually nod their head and say yes, but they're, it's very hard to implement these things when the administrator wants to keep doing what worked back 50 years ago, which was just advertise, advertise and advertise. But I don't think that really, um, that, that can't be the future anymore. And especially now with AI, where things are becoming much easier to, to, um, learn. And, and then the last point I'll make at, as, as far as higher education goes is one thing that always is strange to me is that they'll have the career fairs and they'll work with a few companies here and there. My company has worked with many colleges over the years to bring on, um, interns, but, uh, you know, they're not in the cutting edge, you know, take digital marketing, for example, I've taught digital marketing at several colleges at both the undergrad and graduate level. And you are, you are using textbooks that are one, two, three years old, you know, and there's some good programs out there, no doubt, you know, that, that, that give you real time information and simulation of certain, uh, um, uh, tasks. But at the end of the day, um, you know, anything that's like technology based, any career that's driven by technology, which let's face it, most are, it, it, it's to me amazing that the, the the colleges don't work closer with the big job, you know, the big companies, the ones who are generating the jobs, but even the small companies um, that are out there, you know, to say, hey, look, are we teaching the right material? And if not, um, will you want to help us? Um, they they typically don't do it that way, right? A academia, they do everything internally, but typically it's not done by the people on the ground, which are the students and the professors, right? And uh, what ends up happening, I will say this, I mean, really, it, it's an issue that I think everybody that's listening to this knows about is that you, you get, you know, a lot of students that, that graduate, come out, are not ready 
They're not ready for a career in anything. And we, the companies, bear the responsibility to then teach them how to how to work and so i think that's something that's missing as well so if you're a you know like i said a college a, a professor out there you know test create some content be a thought leader you know do something that's different i think that you know that's a way to generate more leads and grow your um student body so that's all i've got for today's episode remember every educational institution is unique but the need for brand awareness and student engagement is universal And that's what I was talking about today, that full uh, journey from baby all the way to graduate. And so go forth and educate, not just inside the classroom, but as I said, in the vast world of the digital world, which includes social media, don't be afraid, share what you know, It it will help your institution. Now catch you in the next episode.